Hello, Wanderers. Welcome to a brand new Crusader Kings 3 playthrough set in the Game of Thrones mod. We return once again to Westeros with the new update to the mod. And so we are going to be giving that a try. Now, we are not playing in the brand new bookmark, which is obviously a very interesting bookmark to play in. But no, we are playing actually in the most current timeline after Robert has won the war against the Targaryens, and that is because we are playing as House Valerian, one of the few remaining true Val Valerian houses left in Westeros. And I believe playing in this bookmark is the most interesting time to play House Valerian because they had such close ties to the Targaryens that playing underneath them in the normal you know, in the previous bookmarks would probably be kind of boring. But when the house that you served under faithfully for so long has been ousted and now a usurper sits on the throne, well, that leads for some interesting things to potentially happen. So we are playing as a Lord Amonford of Driftmark. Now, he is just a young man, 16 years of old, but he is going to be a pretty good character to play as. Uh, you can see here his traits. He is forgiving. He is arrogant, brave, and impatient. So a nice mixture of traits. I would say that this man is probably a true noble. Now, this is a type of character who, you know, goes into battle, who, you know, definitely has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. But, you know, he's not necessarily a bad guy. He's not an evil man or anything like that. Um, he's just, he's just a pure noble, you know, he's from a very illustrious family and, and frankly, he knows it. He's been trained in war. We are a skilled tactician. Obviously we have been knighted. We are handsome. So, you know, that's going to go uh, pretty far for us. And we are also a skilled fighter. So yeah, pretty well trained. And not to mention, we do have a, a Valyrian sword here, Seafoam. So I don't think that this is a canonical uh, sword. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't recall this being a canonical Game of Thrones sword, maybe in some of the supplementary materials. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below if there is actually any, you know, George R.R. R. Martin credited instances of the sword Seafoam coming up. Either way, uh, I'm not going to turn that down because uh, these swords are a Pretty awesome. So what is going to be our goals for this playthrough? Well, the Targaryens have been ousted and now we have had to bend the knee to Robert Baratheon. So what I think that we're going to do, we are for the time being going to kind of play it out how it went uh, historically. You know, the Valarians did, you know, continue to serve under House Baratheon for quite some time. And... I think that we are going to probably play that for a little bit, but at the earliest opportunity, if a Targaryen or even a Blackfire Pretender arises, we are probably going to throw our weight behind them. So that's going to be the the rough plan here for, for us. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to try to build up some power, build up some money, and just generally build ourselves up to the point that we can really provide a a good aid to any Targaryen returners. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll get like a, Dar a Daenerys or Viserys coming in at some point. Uh, I think the Blackfire, you know, invasion will probably happen at some point too. But yeah, we are just going to kind of build up and prepare ourselves for that opportunity. Now we do have... Uh, our younger brother here, you can see Orain Waters. He is our bastard brother. Now, this character did play an interesting role in the books, uh, more so than the character we're playing now, uh, because Orain Waters, if I remember correctly, he was named the Master of Ships by Cersei, and then he ended up taking that entire fleet and becoming like a king of the pirates down in the step zones down here. Pretty sure that's uh, what happened for this character there. So yeah, we'll see what he does in this game. But uh, 
He is not our heir. Our cousin is our heir. And uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, we do need to uh, look into getting ourselves a marriage now. We could look for some, you know, potential marriages, alliances. You know, maybe Sarah Went could be potential, but she is barren. So that wouldn't really be too helpful. You know, we've got some Bracken, some good brothers, uh, things like that. But I don't really, not really too interested in that. I'm more interested in getting a marriage with somebody of Valyrian blood because we want to, you know, we're a Valyrian. Let's keep the blood pure kind of thing. So we don't have too many options, really. The only true Valyrian houses in my mind, I know there's uh, some kind of like minor uh, ones around here, but to me, the, the real ones are going to be the Valarions and House Keltigar. And honestly, uh, we've got a potential option here for a marriage with Mylenda Keltigar. Uh, Celtigar Keltigar? We'll call them Keltigars for now. Uh, we do have a potential marriage option there. That might not be too bad. We could get the alliance with them. And, uh, you know, that is one thing that I'm kind of looking at. That extra 2000 could be useful in the future. I'd say the only other option potentially would be our cousin Valena Valarion. And that would be a pretty good one. I think she's our second or third cousin. So not that closely related, but, you know, a little bit closely related. Uh, not that that would really matter too much in Westeros. But yeah, I think that uh, this might be a good option, but she doesn't really have very good traits, frankly. Um, and we wouldn't really get any alliances. So although it would keep the Valarian line, you know, pretty pure, I, I don't think that that's necessarily the best option for us. I do think that my Lenda Keltigar is going to probably be better. She doesn't really have that much better traits, but she's got diligent which is actually all right. So, you know, getting the alliance with House Keltigar, they are Westerosi Valyrian technically, but they are Valyrian enough for me. And uh, technically, you know, she does have a, uh, one of her grandparents was a Valyrian here. So, you know what? I think that that will, that will count enough. So technically, you know, we're probably cousins anyways already. Eh? So everybody freaking is in <laughs> Westeros. So I think that's where we're going to go for this. I just think that's probably going to be the best option here. Don't need to do a grand wedding or anything like that. We probably have the money for it, but I'd rather save the money for now. There's a 4.1% chance of our children being inbred. Oh, I mean, I'll take that chance. <laughs> I'll take I'll take a 5% chance. It's fine. Uh, we got to choose a patron aspect. Uh, what are we going to go for? Probably something to increase our prowess. I mean, we're probably going to want to try to get some, uh, you know, get some tournaments in. I'm sure that Robert's going to host a tournament or two. So if we can go in there and win some tournaments, win some prestige from that, that is going to be very helpful for us. Uh, we can't, can we arrange a, no, we can't really do anything because he's in the court of House Chelsted. Yeah, it's definitely Chelsted. I'm glad I can still remember uh, a lot of the, you know, uh, coat of arms and stuff. Some people may call my Game of Thrones knowledge into question, and it's true. I haven't read the books in a long time. I'm not fully caught up on House of the Dragon. Obviously, I've watched all of the Game of Thrones show, and I am caught up in the books. I've read a lot of the supplementary material. Um, but that was, you know, a little bit of a little bit of time ago. So forgive me for things that I get wrong. But I do know at least a fair amount about Game of Thrones. So hopefully that comes across as I'm playing because I really do enjoy this series. And I, li I like the world. I like pretty much everything about it. And so, you know, hopefully I can impart a little bit of knowledge to you and you can impart a little bit of knowledge to me in the comments. So if you've got any interesting facts about House Valarian, uh, like I said, I haven't caught up on the House of the Dragon show, so which is uh, got the new season coming out soon too. So maybe I should catch up on that. 
But in any case, that is neither here nor there. We need to potentially ask our head of faith for some gold. Yeah, I mean, why not? And then we should probably station our men at arms regiments here. What do we got? We got some crossbowmen. I haven't added any sub mods, but I probably will add a few sub mods in. You guys know that I've had some problems with the Game of Thrones mod before with it causing some crashes. Uh, that's probably because this, <laughs> when I have my recording equipment going on, it uses a ton of memory. And I think my computer was crashing because I didn't have enough memory. So I've doubled how much RAM I have. So I went from 16 to 32. Hopefully that'll avoid some crashes here. But as I look over at my other screen, I see that I'm already using uh, a lot of RAM and definitely more than I had on my system before. So yeah, this mod is pretty intensive. I kind of wish that it wasn't. I wish that they got rid of, you know, what, a fifth? At least maybe even like two fifths of all these like little places. Like we don't really need, you know, every single one of these little cities and baronies and stuff like that. You don't need that. And then they're going to add the rest of the world. Like it's it's big enough as it is like uh, just my opinion. I love this mod, but I wish that they had toned it down in scope a little bit more. That's just me. You know, maybe somebody will make a sub mod that does that. If they do, uh, link me to it because I will happily install that sub mod. I think we will put on the armies of Westeros sub mod and things like that probably for the next episode. But I just wanted to make sure that things worked. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to crash on me again in this first episode. So this is a test. This is a test. <laughs> if this episode comes out, you'll probably know that it uh, didn't. In any case, I have gone off the deep end here. We got to pick our lifestyle. Our lifestyle is probably going to go for the chivalry focus. We are a young man, 16 years old. We're trained. We're a good fighter. So, you know, we probably should go with that. It's going to increase our attraction, which is already pretty decent here. We're going to get a plus 30 to attraction. So, you know, uh, my Linda Keltigar is going to be, you know, pretty happy to be betrothed to such a handsome and daring knight as we. And uh, we're going to have to make a name for ourselves. Anything else? We are above our domain limit. I'm probably... Uh, I mean, what is this? Province of Black Hole? We could give this away. We could grant it to a cousin here. I'm not... Uh, I'm not really opposed to that. Damon Valarion, who are you? Yeah, you know what? He is a cousin. He does have... Ah, he's got two kids, so, you know, that could be good for, you know, uh, <laughs> keeping it in the family, which, uh, you know, is unfortunate, but we want to keep that Valyrian blood pure because, uh, you know, we are playing a sea dragon playthrough. So, you know, I am going to grant him the title, no, not the title of High Tide, the province of Blackhall. You know what? We'll keep, uh, we'll keep the family ruling here. I think that's fine. We really only need... Uh, the two drift mark and high tide is gonna probably be plenty for us, and yeah, we're gonna get time rolling here. We could go and uh, send for a maester from the citadel. Uh, we're gonna accept that money from the high septon here. Send for a raven to old town, and what else we got? We can request a loan. Not gonna bother. Adopt a personal set of arms. We do have some new decisions from the update. Now, I didn't look through all of the notes for what has been added, but I just wanted to, you know, dive in and kind of play through it blind. So I'll probably check some things out in between episodes. But yeah, for now, we're just kind of playing things out. We're getting a little start here, and then we will dive a little bit deeper into things uh, probably in the next few episodes. So what is our plan and what can we do? Well, we can station that men-at-arms regiment. We could probably create another one. Um, ah, I mean, we can afford quite a few, actually. We can get six, which seems crazy, considering we are just a duke. But, you know, that's the Game of Thrones mod. Everything is bigger. Everything is crazier. Uh, trebuchets are probably going to be our best bet because we can afford them. You know, it's going to give us a way better bonus than pretty much anything else even though they are expensive. 
but we're going to need to do some sieges at some point. We can get Dragon Guard, so I'm tempted to maybe get one of you. And, oof, I mean, we're already at 179. The Dragon Guard could be cool, but you know what? We'll wait till we get the Armies of Westeros uh, submod before we get our next uh, regiment in here. So, uh, let's see. Hire a Maester. Well, we're already doing that. We can negotiate an alliance with Magister Solorion. Ooh, from House Lohar. Oh, yeah, because uh, isn't this our, our mother? Yeah, our mother... It was uh, from House of Lohar, which is a Lysini family. So obviously, you know, I'm sure most of you guys who know Game of Thrones and know the world pretty well will know all this, but not everybody will. But all of these places here in Essos, particularly, you know, uh, south of Pentos and down, and uh, I think even up in, oh gosh, where, you know, like, Bravos and oh, what's the other one over here? I think there's one more Valyrian uh, colony over here, but I can't remember the name of that one. But all of the you know, Pentos, Mir, Tyrosh, and Lys, these were all of Valyrian colonies. Now, obviously, there was probably a little bit of intermixing with the locals and things like that, but for the most part, these could be essentially considered descendants of the Valyrians. Now up here you've got the Andals or the you know the precursors to the Andals who eventually went and landed in the Vale and then conquered most of Westeros except for the north. Uh anyways I'm going off the deep end with the, <laughs> the lore stuff already. But suffice to say that uh you know these families from Elise here are you know definitely going to have some Valyrian blood and so you know, our mother comes from House of Lohor, and uh, we can get an alliance there, which we will probably do because uh, it's going to be helpful. We could declare a few wars. Now, we could go and disrupt the piracy of Pirate Lord Salador's son. Now, this character shows up in the books uh, and in the show, I do believe, and uh, he's an interesting character. I don't really want to disrupt... <laughs> you know, disrupt his piracy. His pirate realm will be destroyed. Yeah, so Squadron of Sandstones is destroyed. Uh, he is killed by us. Oh, okay. Your coastal counties are safer. Ooh, and okay. Well, we get some nice bonuses. You gain proven against pirates, pirates for five years. Ooh, that's not so bad. Uh, but I don't really want to get, you know, I don't want to take out this character too early just because he's like a named character. If any other pirates come up, we might deal with them. What we could do, potentially, is do a free slaves <laughs> war against Tyrosh. Now, that would be interesting. It'd be a little bit weird. I don't know how we would explain that lore-wise, but it might be something we could consider later. I don't know. I don't really see why we would, you know, we... Has wet, you know, the Iron Throne, have they really... There might be some instances of them doing some wars against like Pentos and Mir and stuff like that, but I don't think it's really that common in the history of Game of Thrones. So uh, we'll see. We'll see how that uh, all plays out. But for now, we're just going to let time roll. We've got that alliance with the Celtigars. So there we go. That's going to give us a nice little advantage. We get our Maester. Who is our Maester? Maester Ebros here. Ah, he's actually pretty good. 36 learning. He's got a renowned, ooh, renowned physician. That's actually nice. Maester, trained fighter too. Uh, good. So, you know, let's bring him on. That's going to cost a little bit of money there. We should probably, oh yeah, okay. So we got him in that position there. And uh, yeah, well, like I said, we're going to be kind of playing around with stuff a little bit more in the further episode robert's boils uh-oh we've already got some diseases uh spreading so that's great great news well you know let's see plagues uh, i don't really see oh we've got some plague up here oh it's spreading up in the north uh infection in east watch gross well a good thing that's far away from us oh what they got here hard veil yeah right okay well 
Good thing we're far away from the veil, so we don't really need to worry about that too much, hopefully. Galbert's pox is spreading. Oh, my. I'm glad we're on an island, you know. That's uh, hopefully going to keep us safe. Oh, we can get a couple more wars going. Now, this is a little bit more interesting. We could go and, you know, free some of these slaves of these pirate lords. You know, go and attack this little pirate here and, uh, you know, prove ourselves in battle. Hey, you know what? Why the heck not? Let's, uh, let's do that. You know what? We are a young man. Perhaps we've been sent by Lord Stannis here because I do believe we are, you know, are we on his council? I should hope we are. Yeah, we are his admiral. So, uh, Stannis might be sending us, you know, south to go and deal with the pirates, which totally, you know, that makes sense. Also, Stannis looks pretty handsome here, you know, full head of hair. Uh, I wonder what, uh, what's going to cause him to, uh, you know, lose all that. Hopefully not the stress of us rebelling against him eventually, but we'll see. In any case, uh, I don't think we're going to need to call in our allies for this. I think we're just going to need to raise our pretty strong army and then send it straight in to go and uh, deal with the pirates. So that's exactly what we shall do. Let's get a moving. There we go. It's going to cost us a little bit of money to go and do this but uh yeah well we're doing a good deed and frankly we are you know proving ourselves as a capable warrior let's make sure that we are in charge of the army we are in charge of the army so we're gonna land here and then we're gonna do battle and this will be our very first battle here as the lord of ships for stannis baratheon here so let's see how do you guys think we'll fare? I'm hoping that we will fare good and not die immediately in our very first battle. Let's see. I mean, seem to be doing a pretty good job. Our Night Lord G Gullion killed Elia. Oh, Pirate Lass was slain. Doesn't look like we're having too much trouble with Lord Kayelin. Kayelin. There we go. Yeah, we crushed him there. Now we're going to siege down his little pirate shanty town. And, uh, you know, be done with him there. So we'll, uh, we'll let that go. And, you know, who knows how long it's going to take. Sieges in this <laughs> mod take forever as well. You know, we could frankly be here for probably, you know, probably months or years. So, uh, you know what? We'll leave, um, we'll leave somebody else in charge of the siege just because I don't want to be stuck here. Forever, so you know, Lord Rogar of Silverhorse. Oh, here we go. He's a cousin of ours. You know, we'll put him in that position, and uh, you know, we'll take our ships back home. And if we are needed, we'll uh, come on back. So we won the battle. That was the important thing. But you know, sieges take forever, so we'll leave somebody in charge of that siege. Let's take a look at the details of the battle. Probably nothing significant other than our knight, you know, slaying this pirate wench. Well. Uh, good job, Lord Gullion here. Uh, how's Quince? Oh, man, he's got... He is a Crownlander, but he's got the Tyroshi, you know, coloring to his beard. So oh, that's interesting, I guess. I mean, does he have Tyroshi blood? Hmm, who knows? But he apparently likes their style. So we'll see what goes on. Province, uh, you know... <laughs> Well, the uh, the poxes are spreading, as as they do. We need a new Castellan here. Uh, well, let's take a look at that, Lord Gullion. Ah, uh, we could get Ebros here as our Castellan. He's actually pretty decent, so we'll probably put him in that position. Oh, what happened there? Did we win the? Uh... Uh, they came back and attacked us, and then we crushed him. We captured Isilla here. Well, uh, that's fine, but we can now enforce our demands. So we will gain some prestige. Freed slaves may join our court. Then we'll probably gain another bit of prestige. Gloryhound vassals gain 10 opinion of us. I mean, not so bad. There we go. Oh, look at this. An interesting event. My camp roars with life as soldiers celebrate their great victory, as fine a feast as could be prepared is laid out for them all to enjoy. 
One of my captains enters my tent, an expression of pride upon his face. Lord Monford, a few of the new freedmen request an audience. I nod to him, awaiting the flurry of thanks the former slaves are sure to give. Quincy approaches, with other freedmen at his heels. They stop just before me and kneel. My lord, when the slavers stole us and destroyed our homes, butchered our families. Quincy glances to the familiar faces of Barnaby beside him, as if to draw from his strength while holding back tears. We thank you for freeing us from their grasp, but there is nothing for us to go back to. I humbly plead for you to take us into your service. We are all very skilled at our crafts. I'm certain you can find a use for us. Who do we have here? We've got uh, Quincy himself, who is, whoa, pretty decent here in the intrigue department. Uh, then we've got, what, Barnaby, uh, who is also actually pretty good as a steward. And Ambro Ambrode here, who is a torturer. Uh, you know what? Maybe we could uh, potentially find some good, uh, good uses for him. Uh, you should rebuild your lives instead of seeking a new master. So we would gain strong hooks on all of them. Uh, or we can have them join our court. Uh, we'll probably have them join our court because they are uh, useful characters. So there we go. And uh, we can return our army home. We have, you know, dealt with a den of piracy here in the owls. Oh. What is, uh, who are these? Oh, this is how Seaworth. Interesting. I see. Because, of course, uh, Lord Renly rules the Stormlands, but how Seaworth is sworn to, uh, to Stannis with uh, Davos the Onion Knight here, who was raised up from the... From the wee smuggler that he was to, you know, this position as a lord. Well, good for him. I uh, got some more pirates going around. We could just go and farm them for essentially a lot of uh, a lot of prestige. And, you know, I'm half tempted to do that while we kind of wait for some for some other things to pop up. Oh, we can station these regiments. I keep forgetting. Uh, let's just put one over here, and let's uh, put another one over here. That will be good. What do we got here? Greetings, Lord Monfort of Driftmark. I am willing to release Melantine for my care, but my but freedom does not come free. Who is this guy? Melantine, how were you captured? Why do I care? I mean, he is... Uh, I mean, he's a relatively okay fighter for 10 coins i mean it's hard to get good knights you know for for your coins so you know what? i'll i'll do that for 10 coins usually they cost a little bit more than that i do just want to check out my knights we got a couple accolades we could spare uh so you know potentially we might throw some of these around here Barnaby could get one, Ambrode could get one, Master Eamon of Spicetown is a chicken, <laughs> aka stupid. Um, you know, Barnaby, we could make Barnaby potentially a uh, one of our knights, why not? Bearer of the Lord's Seal, that's actually not that bad of a title. He could be a Reeve, which will gain us some stewardship, which is actually not terrible. Uh, parochial opinion, that's okay. What else could we make him? Thug? <laughs> uh, disciplinarian? Levy maintenance modifier, minus 20%. And levy reinforcement, ooh, that is actually, that is actually quite helpful. And then Valiant is, we could make him secondary attribute Reeve. Disciplinarian and Reeve? The fire in the plains? Uh, you know, I like the bearer of the lords. Bearer of the lords seal i thought that sounded pretty cool especially for a reeve slash disciplinarian so uh you know what let's uh let's make that accolade and uh we've got maester aemon as his uh as his backup essentially we could create a few more here we could get uh melantine here who we just rescued uh but i don't really see the need for that is there anybody that we want to you know put uh, essentially put away and forbid them from from becoming knights. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm fine with pretty much all of these people potentially dying in battle. 
So we're not going to worry uh, too much about that. So there we go. All right, uh, Lord Robert, why don't you uh, host yourselves? Oh, and he does have a child, Prince Jonlin, who's got that dark hair, just like House of Baratheon. So maybe uh, Cersei actually, I mean, different timeline. Maybe she gave birth to uh, a proper Baratheon son here. Well, it's, uh, you know, things can change and they probably will. Like I said, we're kind of hoping for a Blackfire or Targaryen Rebellion that we could join on. If everything just went the exact same as in the books, then why wouldn't we just read the books? We're here to play an alternate history, and so that's exactly what we're going to do. But the question is, what are we going to do from here? Like I said, there's going to be some new stuff in the next episode. I will be a little bit more prepared. The game hasn't crashed on me so far, so hopefully... That new bit of RAM will allow us to play a full series in this mod. Uh, but if we are going to play a full series, what would you like to see happen? Leave your comments down below and I will look forward to reading them. But until the next one, Wanderers, thank you for watching.